How much Vashavankas do you have? I don't know, maybe... Um, 12. <laughs> maybe not 12, but uh, 6 or 8. What do you believe to be the peak of bilateral uh, relations? The peak will be, from my perspective, when the president, when President Macron comes comes to to Ukraine, I don't know when he is going to come, but I expect this speak to come. Can we expect him before the elections in France? I would love saying <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hello world, it's Kiev, not Kiev on the line. My name is Polina Bachuk and this is my friend and fellow Tatiana Hajduk. Uh, bonjour, madame et monsieur. Uh, today we have a great pleasure to talk to His Excellency, Mr. Ambassador of France to Ukraine, Etienne de Ponsin. Mr. Ambassador, enchanté. <laughs> Lascavo prossimo do residency uh, Franci. Dobre den. Dobre den. Dobre den. Chudovo ukrainske. That's fantastic. Ah, <laughs> That's the great start from, for our interview, and uh, that's the part where I invite you to start with a block of personal questions. So we know that you arrived uh, in Ukraine in 2019, September, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. Was yes. that your first time being in Ukraine? Not really the first time, but the first time living in Ukraine, yes. Uh -huh. yes. So what made um, an impression, the first one? I mean, the impression, uh, first impression is, was very, was great, I think, uh, in particular the life, the quality of life in, in, in Kiev, uh, the fact that there are so many restaurants, uh, that there are people in the street, uh, Sunday in Kweshatik, for example, I think it's, it's, it's a great memory going through Maidan and uh, going back from, from the office to, to the residence by foot is always a great, a great pleasure. I love this city, it's uh, vivid, a lot of joy, a uh, lot of difficulty of course, but it's a passionate city, uh, Kiev, I see. Speaking of the restaurants, we know that uh, one of the best uh, uh, types of relaxation in France is uh, sitting in a restaurant on a terrace, uh, having a cup of coffee with a beautiful view. But in Kiev, do you have any favorite French restaurants that you could recommend to the viewers of Kiev, not Kiev, if there are some? It's difficult for me to limit the list because uh, there are so many. Uh, <laughs> my best, my favorite one is uh, Citronelle, but uh, I love also uh, Très Français, uh, Frenchy, uh, La Fabrique. Uh, and so there, there, are, there are a lot that are different, but what I can say is that I, I have the same quality of life here in Kiev, meaning the restaurants, as I have in, in, in Paris. They are open, the, in, during the summertime you have terrace and this is really a, a great place. That's very by. nice to hear. Mr. Ambassador, if a friend of yours asked you to bring him or her something, a present from Ukraine that would remind him or her of Ukraine, what would it be? I would say naturally I will recommend the Vishivanka because this is really a symbol of, of your country. It's a symbol of uh, the resilience of your nation through the ages. It is also uh, a symbol of the fact that you are very close to nature and that uh, you, you were peasants as we were peasants in France. So there is, there is an, an additional, I would say, similarities between the French people and the Ukrainian people. So Vishibanka is, is typically Ukrainian. And uh, I will definitely bring him this, uh, this beautiful shirt. Yeah. How much Vashivankas do you have? I don't know, maybe... Um, 12. <laughs> maybe not 12, but uh, 6 or 8, yes. I, I love the material mm -hmm. also, the mm -hmm. real Vishivanka, mm -hmm. because some, sometimes they are not real, but the real ones... Uh, and what are your preferred colors of embroidery on it? Uh, red and grey, maybe the mix of the two colors, yeah, yeah. That's the most traditional one, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Do you spot any other similarities between Ukrainians and French? Uh, in fact, there are a lot. Yes, there are a lot. Uh, agriculture, of course. We have two big uh, agriculture. Um, this, the importance given to, to culture and to, to history, to the memory also. I'm very impressed by the fact that uh, you, go, you got through difficult times, you have some tragedies in your past, but you remind them. I think of the Holodomor, for example, I think of the 
crimes of the, of the communist time. And so you have the, this capacity, as we have in France, to, to, to continue to be connected with, with the past and uh, overcoming the past for the future. Mm -hmm. And in addition, but maybe it's, it's less important, but we are two countries that count on uh, nuclear energy uh, in, assure our uh, energy security. And it, it's also, I think, um, an area for cooperation uh, in the present and in the, in the future. Mm -hmm. So we are slowly shifting to the cooperation and political uh, questions. So we've already found out that you've been working here in Ukraine for two years. Um, what do you believe to be the peak of bilateral uh, relations between France and Ukraine uh, during this time? So what uh, main achievements in uh, our relations uh, did you witness from the Embassy of France in Kyiv? Usually a term for an ambassador is between three or four years. So. From my perspective, the peak has not arrived yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I work for it, but the peak will be, from my perspective, when the president, when President Macron comes comes to to Ukraine. I don't know when he is going to come, but I expect this peak to come. I'm fully sure that uh, he, he, he will visit. He has promised to President Zelensky that he wants, and um, sincerely, he, he would like to come. He's working on it. So far, he has not. Been, um, he has not found the, the right timing to, to come. So we are preparing this peak, I would say. So we are climbing the, the slope. Uh, and for two years, uh, uh, because my term has started two years ago, uh, I think we, we have already done a lot, uh, in, in, in particular in the economic areas, negotiating uh, very important uh, agreements between France and, and Ukraine. So we are working for this peak to come. The, the question about the visit of the president of uh, France was our next question. So, so can we expect him before the elections in France? I would love to say <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm not sure okay. because time is of the essence. In the, in the, you know that now he's going for election quite soon. And in addition to that, we will uh, hold uh, the French presidency of the European Union first semester of next year. So yes, uh, I'm, I'm really convinced that he's working on coming. Maybe we'll find the, the small slot to come before his re-election. I'm not, I'm not certain 100%, but what I can say is that even if he doesn't come before next election, uh, the relationships, uh, personal relationships between President Macron and President Zelensky are very good. They are friendly, they are friends, uh, even if a uh, diplomatic uh, environment it is not um, usual to, to say friends, but uh, I sincerely think that uh, they, they are. And uh, they, they call each other regularly and regularly for long conversations. They, have a, they are of the same age. Uh, the two first ladies also, also have very good relationship and connections. So this has created a, a very friendly environment between uh, at top level, top leaders, but also between our two countries, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. In January 2022, France will take over the EU presidency. Uh, Ukraine is now uh, trying to offer the EU a differentiated approach to uh, integrating new members. In addition to the European partnership, associated trio format. So. Can we expect more understanding on the part of the EU regarding uh, Ukraine's Euro aspirations uh, while France will be uh, in the heart of the EU? Yeah, we in the EU there are so many issues to, to discuss that I'm not sure that this question will be at the core of our presidency because it is not in the proper timing at that moment of the year. Next, next year, mm -hmm. there is no EU-Ukraine uh, summit to prepare, so it will be it will not be top of the agenda for for this uh, obvious uh, reason. What we have said is that we are very attached to, to the Eastern Partnership. Uh, we we want 
very much this partnership to be to be developed and to, to go ahead. Um, we uh, we consider that the EU has to be uh, very um, engaged into uh, protecting its eastern uh, border, eastern environment. So we will welcome all, all initiatives uh, uh, from this trio that you mentioned with uh, great attention and we will uh, devote all the necessary attention to, to those political initiatives. Mm -hmm. So, speaking of Ukraine, I would like to ask about uh, the Normandy format. Uh, before the last uh, meeting of our two presidents, there were hopes that uh, President Macron would bring a uh, new life into the Normandy format. Uh, but uh, for sure, we understand that this is very difficult to do while Russia does not, uh, while Russia denies itself being a part of the conflict uh, in the east of Ukraine. Uh, so. Uh, that's why some experts in Ukraine say that uh, the format needs to be expanded, for example, through the participation of the United States in it. So from the perspective of France, uh, does the possible participation of the United States in the Normandy format mean that um, the format is going to have another uh, you know, a level of uh, negotiation and this stuff? Or does it mean that uh, European countries cannot uh, deal with these questions on their own continent? Maybe before answering your, your question, I, I would like maybe to, to give you the, um, the bigger perspective, which is that together with Germany, we really want to do all our efforts to put an end to the conflict in, in the East. And in Europe, there is, it is not a frozen conflict. It is a conflict that is taking life of young uh, women and men, uh, Ukrainian soldiers, more or less every day. And this is really, we are all horrified by, by the fact that this conflict is, is, is going on for now seven years. And we sincerely want to devote all our efforts to put this conflict to an end. So this is why there is this Normandy format. At this moment, this is the only existing diplomatic format that it's working, so it's working and we, we were successful enough to get this uh, Paris summit in 2019. It was just after my, my arrival. It was a peak in a sense. Uh, since that, since th uh, this moment, unfortunately, there was little progress and we sincerely regret it. But due to, due to the fact that this situation is not sustainable, I mean, the fact that the conflict is continuing day after day, to, um, to provoke casualties and deaths, my president will devote all it, his, his effort and with his team to, to try to find a, a solution and to, to, to come to a, to, a, to a real breakthrough. At the moment, unfortunately, the, situ the situation is, is blocked and it's blocked mostly due to the following the attitude of, of Moscow, that, that's clear, of the Russian side. But anyway, even if the context is not favorable, we will do all our efforts to, to unblock the situation. And until the very, very day, until the very day of, for example, uh, Chancellor Mer Merkel, she will again and again start to to, uh, to unblock the, the, the process. Um, regarding the US, we have already said again and again that the problem is not the format. Mm -hmm. If there is other ideas, bringing new energy, bringing the US, why not? But the problem is not the format. The problem is the lack of political will, in particular from, from the Russian side. So uh, we have very good relationship. We are in contact on a daily basis with our American friends and we exchange about information. If, if they can help us, why not? We are absolutely ready. But the problem is not there. It's mm -hmm. not because you will change the format that you will get, so, uh, get a solution. There will be a solution if there is a change of mind in, the, uh, in, in Moscow. That's our uh, analysis. Do you personally believe that Normandy format is enough to bring Russia to justice? It exists. I don't know if it's enough. It, it exists. It, it, it is a, a place for discussion, for con constant contact. My minister, the councillors, they are 
calling the, the, within the N3. So this is a line of dialogue, a line of discussion which exists. And uh, there is no other possibility. Uh, can you mention another format where there is four uh, uh, within the same room? No, it's just Normandy. So there is this canal of communication. We keep receiving a really worrying news from the eastern uh, borders of Ukraine um, because uh, the intelligence uh, keeps informing us about the military build-up from the Russian side and they are reporting about 90,000 of troops that Russia is gathering near the Ukrainian border and uh, all the countries are worried of the uh, scenario repeating of uh, 2014 when Russia invaded Ukraine. Uh, what would be the reaction of France in case Russia uh, will cross the line? First, regarding the situation, we, we are monitoring closely the, the, the through, through the intelligence and so on and so on, the, the situation. We are also worried because we have uh, read and heard the same, re the same report. It's not clear, there is some diff different interpretations. But having said that, um, <clears throat> we have repeated again and again that the um, integrity of Ukraine is, is, is key and we have warned my ministers recently during a, a meeting with their counterparts, uh, Russian counterparts in Paris, they have warned clearly that uh, we cannot accept uh, any ac military aggression uh, to, to Ukraine. So we have, been, we have been pretty clear about that. Mm -hmm. Then you said that if Russia crosses the line, I think that Russia has already crossed the line. Yeah. Unfortunately, I just need to know, you know, the set of actions, Polina, if our partners have something in mind in case, of course, the line was crossed uh, seven years ago, but in case uh, Russia dares to go further, mm -hmm. what do we have to respond? Of course, we have, we Ukrainians have an army and a strong one. Uh, but but what else can we do to prevent that step? So that was that was what my question was about. But you know, military offensive is not the only way Russia uh, threatens Ukraine because it uses a wide range of hybrid formats, and uh, Russia uses uh, Nord Stream two, for example, as as a part as a tool of a hybrid uh, warfare. And is France on the side of Ukraine in this war? I mean, energy wars. On um, energy, I think uh, you were right uh, developing your, your own capacity. Uh, I mentioned before the, the nuclear energy, and nuclear energy is part of your, of your security, energy security, as we have done in France in, in the 70s. We, we have also developed quite um, a big uh, um, spectrum of uh, uh, nuclear energy with uh, now as you, you may know we produce in France 70 percent of our electricity through, through the nuclear in Ukraine it's 50 percent and both countries were right uh, going into that direction because it's, it's uh, national energy when it, when it comes to, to, to nuclear so we are ready to to develop and to uh, of course, in a secure environment, security is key in the nuclear industry, and, uh, but we are ready to, um, to reinforce the cooperation in that field, to reinforce your, your own energy, se energy security. And fighting climate change, because this is another great advantage of the nuclear energy, is that it is already a decarbonized uh, source, of, source, source of energy. So you, you have to... You, you strike um, two, um, the bird with two, two stones. <laughs> One stone, two birds. <laughs> my um, objective with my, my colleagues, in particular the G7, is to push uh, Ukraine to reforms to make the country more attractive for, for business. I mean, tackling corruption and tackling uh, or reforming the judiciary. French investor. They will be very <coughs> enthusiastic about Ukraine, but they want to be sure that their asset will be protected. The potential of Ukraine is fantastic. 